following program was recorded at Gardner's Supply Chain Executive Conference in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm pleased to welcome Supply Chain Brain Managing Editor, Bob Bowman. We're going to be talking about applying business analytics to the supply chain. And my guest today is Siddharth Taparia, Senior Director for Business Analytics with SAP. Siddharth, welcome to the program. Thanks, Bob. Nice to be here. Thank you for being with us. Talk a little bit about how business analytics today are becoming important in supply chain. So what has happened, Bob, over the last 10 years, companies have continuously invested in a variety of different supply chain technologies, uh, extending from planning to execution. Uh, they've been investing in a variety of enterprise technologies like ERP systems. And business analytics is really a way of getting information out of those investments, getting data and analytics out of those investments. So being able to measure and monitor your supply chain and being able to diagnose where problems might be in your supply chain so that you can improve performance against certain benchmarks or against certain targets that you may have set for your supply chain. What do we mean when we say business analytics? Is it a series of processes? Is it a series of IT solutions? Uh, are they algorithms and a lot of math? Or what exactly are we talking about? It, it is a combination of a lot of these things that, that you described. So it, at a very simple level, business analytics is a way of measuring performance for your enterprise. In this case, specifically measuring performance of your supply chain. How you do that is through a series of dashboards, reports, analytics, graphs and charts that tell you the performance of certain key performance indicators that are important to your organization. So depending on what strategy your organization is following, whether it is to um, make most efficient manufacturing or optimize on costs or be the most customer friendly organization out there, uh, you may have certain different key performance indicators that you want to track, measure and monitor and business analytics provide you an easy way of doing that where from your executives in the boardroom to people working on the shop floor in your warehouses, everybody can have information that they need to do their jobs better, easier, more efficiently. So how should a company begin to address this issue of business analytics? What's the first few steps to take? So the, so the first step really is having the data so that you can make decisions based on that data. And data comes from these enterprise applications that companies have put in place. A lot of times uh, these applications are intended for optimizing their back office functions, but oftentimes they're also uh, more and more becoming uh, oriented towards making their supply chains more efficient. All of these applications are generating enormous amounts of data. What we're seeing out there is there is more data being generated. So as an analogy, uh, there was 70 exabytes of data that was generated uh, just in 2011, which is more than the previous decades combined. So there is more data that is out there than ever before. But what is important is to have this data presented to the decision maker in a way it is timely so that decisions can be made on it and it has to be trusted so that decision makers can actually trust this data to be able to base their decisions upon it. And it has to be accurate and it has to be relevant. Uh, if, the, if there is too much data out there and it's not relevant, then it doesn't do the decision maker any good. Uh, so you have to understand what the data is, what you can do with it, and base your decisions upon it. So that really is the first step of having the right data in place. Once you have the data in place, you also want to go back and look at what are your strategic priorities? What are the areas that you want to measure and manage uh, and optimize most often? Uh, once you understand what the priorities are and you know what is the data uh, that you have available for those priorities, then business analytics is really about mapping those two together. Bringing those two concepts together and providing decision makers ability to consume information and have a series of business processes that support that end to end in the supply chain really makes up the whole concept of business analytics in the supply chain. I know there's no magic number for this answer, but I'm just wondering like, how many KPIs should a company be looking at? So clearly they want to limit them to only the most essential ones, but typically how many of those are they dealing with in any given dashboard? That, that's a great question. So uh, KPIs or key performance indicators are uh, 
various characteristics that you might be measuring. So for example, in supply chain, you may be measuring your forecast accuracy, which is a key performance indicator. Or you may be looking at uh, day sales outstanding or days payable outstanding or your inventory days of supply, for example. Uh, there is no magic number for the number of KPIs that you want to measure. But a rule of thumb is you should have no more than 15 to 30 KPIs that an executive is looking at, and you want to aggregate them to a level where you, even if an executive is looking at uh, a supply chain dashboard, for example, it should not take them more than 10 to 15 minutes to consume that information. So that's a basic rule of thumb. Again, the KPIs depend on what your strategic priorities are and what data you have available in your organization. What are your thoughts on industry standards and benchmarking that might help guide companies to make the right moves and decisions in this area? I think benchmarking is becoming more and more important. So what we're seeing when we talk to our customers is they're not interested in just looking at their performance in isolation. But they, what they want to do is they want to compare their performance against the industry in general, which is where benchmarks come in. And they also want to set targets for themselves based on those benchmarks, and they want to be able to achieve and exceed those targets. So it's extremely important, and benchmarks really come from a variety of different ways. But the most common thing we see is there are industry bodies like the Supply Chain Council, which has the Supply Chain Operations Research Model or the SCORE model, uh, and they provide a benchmarking service which can be utilized uh, to compare your performance against either your industry or uh, a variety of different companies that you might be interested in comparing against so that you are not only differentiating uh, on the key characteristics that you agreed on, uh, but you also also know where you stand against your competition. So in each of the different areas of the score model, plan, make, source, uh, deliver, return, you can, you can look at each of those and you can come up with uh, KPIs in each one based on benchmarking the, the best practice leaders. Yeah, so what the score model does is it provides you key performance indicators, definitions of key performance indicators against each of those areas that you described. So starting from plan, make, source, uh, deliver, return, you have KPIs from that end-to-end -end supply chain perspective. Now, what you want to be able to do as a supply chain organization is understand which are the KPIs that are relevant to you. Once you have identified those KPIs, then you want to be able to benchmark against the competition and see what the competition is doing or what your industry is doing. Where are the areas that they're doing better than you so that you can excel and invest in those areas of priority. So that's really where benchmarks come in. Once you get a dashboard in place with that number of KPIs, do you is it desirable at that point to get into some kind of exception management where you're really only noticing when things go out of tolerance? Or should this stuff be checked all the time just as a matter of course? Um, so the it is much better to look at uh, diagnostic mechanisms. So it is better to look at problem areas rather than looking at everything that is doing well. So you don't want to look at a dashboard that is green. You want to be able to look at specific areas that may be red. And they'll not be red every single day. They'll only be red on certain days. So what you want to do is you want to be alerted when a certain KPI is out of bounds. Uh, you want to be alerted on a mobile device. You want to be alerted by email by a variety of different mechanisms hopefully as soon as possible, so that when your forecast accuracy is out of range, you can quickly go after that issue and address it. Or when your cash-to-cash -cash cycle time is too high, you can go after that issue and you can understand what are the factors that are causing this. So it is not just important to have diagnostics so that you can be alerted when things are going uh, wrong, but you also want to have the ability to do root cause analysis. So you can actually drill down, starting at a top level, uh, if certain things don't look right, you want to be able to drill down, get to the bottom uh, of that issue, which customers might be causing it, which products might be causing it, which regions may this issue be happening from. So you want to be able to understand the overall uh, reasons of why a problem might be occurring in your supply chain. How can business analytics be used to measure risk? So risk is an issue that has become more and more important. So when you look at the uh, news cycle in the last six to 12 months, uh, you have things like Japan, which was incredibly incredibly powerful uh, in terms of causing disruptions in the supply chain. Uh, all the turmoil that has happened in the Middle East, as well as all the different events that have taken place from tornadoes to hurricanes to everything else, 
what has happened is risk has again become one of the things that is forefront for supply chain managers to look at uh, because the, it has the uh, potential of shutting down entire supply chains. So what we have looked at is it is not just important to measure the key performance indicators for an organization, which tells you how well you're doing, but it is also important to measure your key risk indicators or KRIs, which is a little bit newer term uh, so you want to be able to continuously monitor certain performance indicators so that you can tell when they are falling below certain thresholds, there might be risks that may be occurring. And that continuous monitoring helps you quantify that risk and hopefully take uh, steps to alleviate that risk so that it doesn't impact your supply chain. KRI, I expect we'll be hearing a lot more about that acronym in uh, months and years to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Siddharth, for these insights into the whole world of business analytics in the supply chain. Thanks for the opportunity, Bob. I've been speaking to Siddharth Taparia with SAP. Thank you very much for watching.